Hello everybody and welcome to Ecology Story Mode. Now, home gardens can be a really great investment. However, apartments usually have very little space and light to work with them. So the first thing that you really wanna to do to be successful with this is get good measurements of how much light you have and how much space you have. If you have an iPhone, there's a compass app right on your phone. So my suggestion would be just to walk straight towards your window, face it, and just measure what direction you're actually facing. And this will give you an idea of how much actual light you're gonna be getting throughout the year. As well as getting just a measuring stick or something that lets you measure out how many feet you have of sill space. Sill space is important because that's gonna tell you how many crops you can keep in your apartment garden that have a high light demand. And now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to plan the amount of crops that you put in your apartment based on the amount of available space. For this step, you're gonna to wanna to breathe and say with me, I only have 20 square feet available in my apartment for garden space, I don't need 30 pots as well as the type of light that you have available. One easy tip to really help expand your apartment garden is to have a section where there's low light demand plants and a section where there's high light demand plants. So your high light demand plants are probably gonna be your pulses and your nightshades. So that's tomatoes, potatoes, gourds, peas, anything in that category. Your low light demand plants, there's a few things that you can do here, but for me generally, I just view it as being most of my herb garden. Not every herb does well in shaded areas, but for the most part, if you have basil, oregano, lavender, things like this, I just throw them on my counter in my kitchen because they get a pretty intermediate amount of light. So if you just go on Google and type in list of vegetables that grow in the shade or list of full sun vegetables or something like that, you should be able to find a pretty comprehensive list. So supplies are gonna be soil, pots, seeds, water containers, and you probably wanna research your plants before they're growing on the floor because you forgot steaks or something. This is the step where you actually spend money. So it's also the step where you're actually gonna save money. To save money, I buy bulk bags of soil and I choose felt pots, not only because they are cheaper per unit than plastic pots generally, but also because you can fit them in really tight and right next to each other and fit a lot more stuff in your garden. So normally I don't spend money on seed trays or getting any sort of water containers. I spent money on getting two water containers in the past and those are for my bigger pots, but generally, I have another little video on this, but I just get something like this and I put it underneath a lot of my uh, smaller plants. That would be herbs that I'm growing or anything like that or any ornamental plants in the house. As well, I don't buy seed trays. I have some seed trays, but that's because I've bought juvenile plants, which are a really easy way to get started, especially if, if you have something like a grocery outlet near you, where you can get six plants for two to three dollars. But if you understand how little space you have, having a starter seed tray with 30 spots isn't gonna make much sense to invest in when you only have 20 square feet. So that's something you can just completely cut out as an expense and just plant right in the pots. Now, much like your seed, the best way to do an indoor garden, in my opinion, is to start small and grow. My first year, my garden consisted of four kale plants, a few herbs, and a few tomato plants. It's nice because it was really easy to be successful with these plants. I got to learn a lot about how to maintain these different plants where for years, the only thing I'd grown were little herb gardens. But yeah, starting small gave me the confidence to build up and do more things. And now in future years, I have plans to expand how much stuff I grow in my apartment by adding in shelves to give me verticality, adding in grow lights to expand the amount of time I can spend germinating seeds and having more stuff grow, and finding innovative ways to just increase the amount of space that I have. I currently do risky practices like keeping my seedlings on the railing of my uh, balcony, which is just so that they get the most amount of sunlight throughout the day. However, I have, I have to be present on the weekends to do this because I currently don't have anything in place to stop them from falling if there's a high wind day. So I have to physically go out and put them down and make sure there's enough room for them with the rest of my plants. If you have any tips of your own, comment them down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you like watching videos like this. And good luck with your apartment garden.